Hello, welcome to our today's session where we will be presenting Roadmap for uh, 2020. Um, uh, it's a, an unorthodox session. Um, instead of being all together in a single room, um, we're all remote and, and so we will uh, try to make sure that technically everything is working and we have been practicing, so fingers crossed for us. And today joining me, Martin Chiquera, our product manager for security. Ciao, Martine. Ahoy, ahoy. Thanks, thanks to be here. Good to be here. Uh, and also Pavel Minarik. But before you say hi, Pavel, I have to say that Lubo Junte, our product uh, owner for the network performance visibility part, has become recently a father. So congrats, Lubos. Uh, and um, today it's our CTO, Pavel Minajik, who will be presenting on your behalf. Hi, Pavel. Hi, Arthur. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Yes, warm welcome to everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I can see a lot of people are still joining. Uh, but there's no uh, there's no time to lose. So let's jump into it. I will uh, start the presentation. Um, so let me let me share my screen. And uh, we will actually start by something um, uh, something more about Flowmon to remind uh, you of uh, who we are, what to do, and what is our strategy and vision. Flowmon creates secure and transparent digital environment where people rule the network, regardless of its complexity and nature. And what's important are the colors that you can see and the, the colors uh, which we use to highlight some of the parts of the text. These colors uh, correspond with our core values that we are trying to uh, follow when we develop our technologies. So first is to provide actionable insights and automation rather than uh, purely just uh, providing data and letting the user to make any sense out of it. Um, we're focusing on eliminating information noise and trying to present only relevant information. Uh, we're also working, and today you will actually see some of the progress that we make in terms of trending and prediction capabilities, uh, so that not only we show past and uh, real-time data, but also the future. Um, we are trying to balance the time spent uh, between um, strategic and operational and tactical things, so so um, uh, we can we can actually do more of the uh, strategy rather than than, than tactics. Uh, we're breaking the silos between the NetOps and SecOps, and actually the whole presentation today will be about NetOps and SecOps and how they are joined and how they uh, sometimes work separately. Uh, but this is this is our uh, main core idea. We would like our users to uh, actually have any skills to be able to use Fomon. Uh If it's operator, analyst, expert, or director, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. Uh, we believe that time to value is a great differentiator of Flowmon and actually making sure that the uh, deployment time as, uh, is as quick as possible is one of our aims that we will be presenting today. Um, we also think that uh, it's not always about the input data, it's about the output and the visibility, the outcome that we provide. Um, and we're trying to uh, help our customers to uh, be able to control their heterogeneous environments, whether they are cloud uh, or hybrid, um, and still have full control anywhere in the network. With that, uh, this strategy and vision on mind, we are creating the roadmap that we are very happy to present to you today. Especially today, we will be uh, focusing on three uh, aspects. The first one is time to value. What we're trying to achieve is to make as quick installation as possible, which is smooth and easy for users to navigate. We're trying to make um, configuration as seamless as possible by, by providing presets um, and sort of a, a list of uh, configuration templates, if you, if you wish, that 
our users can choose from to configure their Plomon and start using it very uh, quickly, uh, but also helping them to navigate better in the system itself and making a decisive um, uh, operations to respond. Another very strong uh, part is uh, actually trending prediction. So we will be working more and more in our roadmap and our products to provide sort of consolidated view over a status of applications and different services and assets in the network um, and showing uh, some, uh, some prediction, uh, uh, prediction data, but more on that from, uh, from our experts, Martin and Pavel. Uh, and last but not least is to provide, um, provide holistic view on an event. So event is not just um, a summary of what happened, but it's, it, it's important to understand the full scope of the incident. And that can only be done if we talk about severities, uh, if we also um, help to provide remedial options and suggestions on remedial, remedial, remedial actions, uh, but also full view of related services, affected users, uh, impacts on different parts of the network. Uh, by consolidating different events together. Uh, that being said, let's very shortly recap how Flowmon looks uh, today. So Flowmon um, is NetSecOps uh, technology that breaks silos between these two teams. And for each of those teams, we provide different capabilities. Um, so for NetOps, it's network performance monitoring and diagnostics, user experience monitoring, and on-demand full bucket capture and analysis which is Pavel's today's part. And in SecOps, it is about network traffic analysis or what used to be called network behavior analysis, but thanks to uh, ever-changing names of market definitions, et cetera, uh, it's now being called uh, network traffic analysis and volumetric details detection, which is Martin's part today. Uh, this is a um, full full moon portfolio of modules that combine into one holistic uh, technology that helps to streamline uh, incident resolution across the entire network. Right. With that, let me uh, make Pavel presenter now. And Pavel, please go ahead with your part of the presentation. You should be able to present your screen now. There we go. Thank you. I'm switching off my camera and it's all yours. Pavel, your microphone is off. And while okay. Pavel will unmute himself, uh, let me remind you that you can send questions anytime. We will be answering them after each block and also at the end of the session. We are recording the session, so you will receive recording uh, a few days after the session. Thank you, Pavel. I think you're ready. Uh, so it means that we didn't practice enough. Sorry, sorry for that. So I'm going to continue with the network operations timeline, which is for us the Flowmon core product offering. And I will be also talking about a new stuff, new product in the, in the portfolio, but that's, that's for later. So first thing, our flagship Flowmon version 11. We have been working on this new release for at least like last six or seven months. And it's very important step in uh, consolidation of the user interface in moving towards a new user interface. We are coming with uh, completely new reporting. We are coming with new widgets for the dashboard, new dashboard layouts, new predefined dashboards, and many features that we will discuss in more detail during next slides. This, this version is going to be released very soon. We are in fact uh, plus minus one week or maximum two weeks before the beta release of uh, Flowmon 11. This is going to be followed by 11.1 .1, where we will continue in uh, bringing instant business value and uh, providing actionable intelligence out of the box. So we are going to introduce predefined alerts. We are going to incorporate some new visualization techniques that I'm going to explain and a couple of additional improvements uh, in terms of 
for example, packet deduplication on the probe or improvements for intrusion detection on 10G probes. And that's all for this year, because for next year, we are already working on uh, Flowmon 12, and that's going to be really a revolutionary release that's going to change how users will talk to Flowmon, what kind of language, what kind of common language users will have with the Flowmon user interface and how we are going to interpret the data. First, let's focus on the uh, Flowmon 11. So as I mentioned, it's, it's a release that's going to happen in one or two weeks, and we expect a stable version of this release by the end of June. Uh, first thing that you will already notice when you log in is a new set of dashboards. So everything starts with status, with visualizing where you are. If you are collecting flow data properly, if all the flow sources are sending network telemetry, what is the level of application performance? Are you doing well? Are, is there any performance degradation? What is the status in terms of security? So are there any events that need your attention? So it's kind of a status, CMI green, orange, red, so what actions I need to take from there. And it's also about focus on KPIs. So we are going to visualize metrics. We are going to compare these metrics together. So you will really see figures and KPIs on application performance, network performance, retransmissions, and so on. And this is out of the box. So it means that you can select network operations view, security operations view, application performance for a specific application, and you are just like one or two clicks far away from having the dashboard automatically configured and populated with the data. What comes next is reports. This is completely new reporting in the new user interface where all the modules all the reports are consolidated into a single user interface. So you will be able to uh, schedule your reports according to your preferences. You will be able to create them very easily from the dashboard tabs. So whenever you are happy with your dashboard configuration and you would like the system to report on the same data, you just click and say, convert a dashboard tab into report, and you still have the opportunity to customize, adjust the layout, adjust the data, and that's it. You have your reports configured and available for viewing through the application or scheduling, downloading in PDF, and so on. There is a new concept of multi-tenancy, so I would call this evolution. The, the Flowmon appliance is already multi-tenant in terms of user permissions configuration. What we have uh, come with is really a new implementation of a multi-tenancy where you will create independent data spaces on top of Flowmon appliance and you will define users specific per tenant, you will define their very specific roles. So this will actually enable you to slice uh, the single system for multiple different organizations or multiple different tenants. So as a super user, as a super administrator, you are able to create individual tenants and assign visibility, assign permissions to see specific data. Then there are tenant admins. These are users that have, again, admin permissions, but only within a specific tenant. So they are able to create and manage regular users who will then work with the system as they are used to. So this is complete separation of the user roles, of the data spaces, and it's uh, for multi-tenancy. This also enables you to have a user defined in multiple different tenants. So whenever he wants to use the system within a different tenant, he can switch his identity in the user interface and enter 
specific tenant. So it's like if you imagine in, in as you are signed in Google Apps and you want to sign not with your company account, you want to sign with your, you want to switch to your personal account, you can easily do that. So it's a similar concept implemented over the uh, Flowmore appliance. From other improvements that's worth it to mention is uh, branding in the user interface. This enables managed service providers to uh, rebrand the flow mode appliance with specific color scheme, with specific logo. So for service providers, there is a special flow mode license that enables this kind of rebranding. We are also working on extending application level visibility. That's that's for us never ending topic. We still keep track with what is new, what is what is uh, needed. So what it came with is uh, the XLAN monitoring. That's something we have in the product for many years already. Probe is able to understand the VLAN tunneling, the capsulated traffic. But in Flowmon version 11, we are now extracting from the traffic virtual network identifier which is like an VLAN tag. So it's an ID of the VXLAN tunnel. It's part of flow export and it's being stored and processed on the collector. So you can now distinguish easily between individual virtual networks. And we have implemented support from, uh, for IP fix extensions about radius traffic from Gigamon packet brokers. So whenever you are using Flowmon with Gigamon, you can configure IPFIX export on the Gigamon side to give you uh, this kind of data that will be stored and processed on, on Flowmon collector side. So that was for version 11.0. And now we are moving forward to 11.1. And now we are in, in like summer of uh, this year. First thing that's worth it to mention is predefined alerts. So we are going to extend configuration templates by the templates for alerting on NPM on network performance metrics. So as a user, you want to be notified whenever there is an issue in Office 365 applications, whenever there is a round trip time issue, server response time issue, and so on. So you just select an NPM alerting template. As an input data, you select Office 365, apply the configuration template, and that's it. Of course, you can adjust thresholds if needed, but everything is then configured out of the box. Next important topic is new ways how we are going to visualize the network traffic. So this, this visualization, we call it topology visualization, that's going to be a new uh, set of widgets or new uh, visualization technique implemented in the Flowmon appliance. And the idea behind is that you can build your topology. So you define nodes, which means router switches, locations, whatever, and you connect those nodes with edges. And these edges are mapped to profiles, to flow data. So then you can easily visualize what is the traffic from your Brno location to data center, what is the traffic between Washington and New York, whatever match your network topology. So you will understand the bandwidth utilization and you will also be able to visualize uh, the level of the utilization. So if you say this uh, network link is 10G, so then Flowmon will visualize the current bandwidth utilization with the respect to 10G capacity. So your line will go from green to red to understand where the problem is. This is very useful for organizations with a more complex topology with multiple locations over multiple countries. So that's an easy way how to have a single point of view on the whole infrastructure with drill down ability from that to analyzing the data in detail, analyzing the traffic spikes and so on. And it's a concept that's going to be incorporated into Flowmon more deeper in, in version 12, 
we'll get to it. From other improvement that's worth it to mention is the duplication of packets on probes. There are specific situations, usually in public cloud monitoring, where you mirror the traffic from multiple instances. So from one virtual machine, from another virtual machine, which means the traffic between those two machines is mirrored twice. So you would have a duplicate in flow data. You want to avoid those duplicates. You enable packet duplication on the probe level and you can get rid of those duplicate packets. So that's the idea behind, but it's working in any environment. The cloud is just a typical example. Another improvement is on uh, Suricata. So you know that Flowmon provides for a couple of years uh, Suricata intrusion detection system as an open source package that's free of charge. It's available. You can download it. You can run it on Flowmon probes for 1G port speed. We are going to adopt a new approach that will enable us to run this uh, intrusion detection system Suricata on 10G probes as well. And last thing that's worth it to mention is improved control of the remote access control in the Flowmon appliance itself. So there will be more granular options of configuration of the remote access rules and firewall rules on the Flowmon appliance in general. So that was Flowmon 11. And we are moving forward to Flowmon 12, uh, which is like approximately maybe one year or less than one year from now. And it's it's complete revolution. Uh, we are going to continue the work on the new user interface. So we will provide new flow data analysis, new visualization, new workflows, new ways how you will configure the views on the data. I, tend to say profiles and channels, but that's going to change. Uh, we want to speak a common language with our users. So we don't want to talk about profiles, channels, chapters. We want to talk about subnets, hosts, services, applications. So that's something that everybody understands. And if this, at the end of the day, creates specific configuration objects on the Flowmon appliance, like profiles, channels, who cares? It doesn't matter. So we want to move from the technical language to asset-based configuration, because assets, that's a common way how to speak about your environment, about your servers, about your subnets, locations, applications. All these, uh, all these things are assets, basically. So the whole Flowmon configuration will be changed to asset-like way. This will also enable us to do topology visualization because in that specific site, you have multiple hosts. On these hosts, you run those services. These services are tied to applications. So that's, that's kind of connections or dependencies that helps us to build the topology visualization out of the box. And that's something that gives you context into performance metrics, into security incidents, because you will be able to easily map all the performance metrics and security events to, again, subnets, hosts, services, so you understand what is the impact, who is affected, where the, where the issue is. So that was for Flowmon. And we will talk also about Flowmon packet, packet Investigator. What is that? That's actually an evolution of uh, Flowmon Traffic Recorder. So what, what it does, how it changes the traffic recorder. For network operations, you know you have your flow data. It's enriched with application visibility. There are performance metrics. So you handle your network operations mostly with flow data. You don't need anything else. But if flow data does not provide sufficient level of detail, you need to analyze full packet traces. And that was the reason why we 
have Flowmon traffic recorder in the portfolio to enable to run packet captures to get to packet traces for subsequent analysis. And that subsequent analysis, that was something that needed expert knowledge that was usually done in Wireshark by an experienced network administrator. And that's what we are going to automate. That's what we are going to simplify. Because we have implemented new PCAP analysis engine that understands network protocols, that understands their dependencies, that understands all the RFC specifics, that understands errors. So all this knowledge has been embedded into the new product called Flowmon Packet Investigator, which will be able to capture the traffic as traffic recorder, and that will be able to do the analysis. What is analysis? So basically the PCAP files, the packet traces, they correspond to network sessions where specific protocols and operations within those protocols happen. So it will give you warnings, it will give you errors, it will, it will confirm that the protocol was established properly, that the operation was terminated I mean, in an unexpected way. So you see yellow, you see red, you see indicators where the problem is. And you have this as a built-in automated expert knowledge. So this analysis is done automatically on your behalf. And that's, that's not all. It also includes suggestions and recommendations what to do. So on this specific screenshot, you see an analysis of email traffic. It says that there was an SMTP connection established, server welcome the client, server is ready. There is a warning that no authentication has been detected. Uh, there was a request to start encrypted session. There was SSL handshake detected. So you see how different protocols are also embedded one in another. But what we have is an error of SSL, which says that the client was not able to negotiate the encryption with the server. They were not being able to negotiate so-called shared key material to establish the session. So there is an incompatibility in encryption on the client side and on the server side. So you don't need to run Wireshark to figure out that. You have this as a built-in embedded knowledge in the system itself. So that's that's the Flowmon Packet Investigator that's also going to be released in like one or two weeks because this requires uh, Flowmon version 11. And every user of Flowmon Traffic Recorder will have an upgrade path, can continue with Traffic Recorder or can upgrade to the Flowmon uh, Packet Investigator that's going to be the next product next generation of the traffic report oh, well thank you thank you very much for your presentation i think that uh, especially packet investigator is super exciting news we will be sending more information about that and you will hear more and more details uh, on time but until then i have a couple of questions that i wasn't able to answer myself so Pavel, if you're ready we have maybe two minutes to answer uh, about six or seven of them uh, shall we okay. all right uh, what's going to happen with the uh, dashboards in modules? Uh, okay, that's that's a very good question. Actually, dashboards in modules will disappear. With Flowmon 11, there's not going to be the dashboard in Flowmon Monitoring Center anymore because it's replaced by the central dashboard. And same is going to happen with reports. In Flowmon 11, we will still keep reports in Flowmon Monitoring Center but there is a message for the user that we are moving to new reporting in central dashboard. So we plan to drop this functionality step by step from the modules completely and replace with central dashboarding and central report. Thank you. Another question is who is, I, I guess this is how is the visualiz visualization configured? Do you have discovery? And that was related to the topology uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So in, in Plomo 11.1, it will be really the first implementation of the visualization method, and there will be no discovery. It's just a manual configuration. And the idea behind is really to provide a top level view of the infrastructure. So the inf configuration should not be really complex, should be pretty easy, and that's it. Then in Flowmon 12, we will uh, connect this visualization to the asset management. So as you will configure your network topology, as you will configure your assets, it will automatically create the topology. And then as a next step, we want to implement auto discovery. So the system will indicate you new hosts, subnets, whatever is uh, whatever appeared in the network. And user will have the option to confirm, yes, this is something that I want to have in my system. That's something that I recognize. But that's really still some time before us to get there, we need to build it step by step to have the core functionality and then to add the, the, add the discovery feature. And also the part of the discovery feature we are experimenting with is understanding the role of the device. So there will be like text saying this is like a server, this is probably database server. So we will try to understand the role of the device and services running on that device from its network behavior. Thank you, Pavel. We have a couple of more. Uh, maybe the ne perhaps the, the, the next one will be just a yes or no answer. Can we keep the old user interface, which was the question, uh, I believe, for the version 12? No. Thank you for the answer. Let's see how fast will be the next one. How can we test the investigator? Uh, that's, Is it that's, easy? Easy. that's easy. The investigator once released as a beta version. Which is when? Uh, it's expected like one or two weeks. Cool. It will be Flowmon 11 and Packet Investigator. So you will need to apply for a license that includes the investigation capability. Because if you have now traffic recorder and you upgrade to packet investigator, you will not have the investigation capability without a proper license. So you need to apply for a license and then you can test the investigator capability. Uh, and for the license, uh, liaise with your contact, um, either Flowmon or partner. Um, and you can also contact us at support at, dot, uh, at flomo.com. Another question for the investigator is, can it input a Wireshark capture? Yes, it can. Uh, I didn't mention it, but it was on the slides. There is the option to capture the traffic on the fly, or there is the option to upload a PCAP that you capture anywhere else. It just to need to be a PCAP format and that's it. Thank you. Uh, let's do one last one and uh, keep the rest for the end of the webinar. For the application, it will work not only for cloud, but if customer has many probes implemented to send to the collector, uh, it is working on collector side too? No, we are talking only about packet the duplication on the probe itself. So. It's not about flow deduplication on the collector side. At the moment, our strategy to flow collection is store all the flows and store them with a reference to the flow source. So to router, probe, whatever produce that flow, so we can reconstruct the full traffic in all those locations, all those different uh, monitoring uh, ports or observation ports in the network. And we do have some internal discussion on whatever we should implement flow the duplication on the collector as well. But that feature mentioned in the roadmap was specifically to packet the duplication on the monitoring interface of the probe. Thank you very much, Pavel. Uh, let's continue with the security part uh, because we are 34 minutes in. Um, uh, and I'll see if we can answer some more questions at the end of the session. So, Martina, I'm making you a presenter now, um, and it's a quick coffee break for Pavel. You can switch off your camera and microphone, and then we're handing over to Martina. Martina, we cannot see you. Oh, there you go. Cool.
the stage is yours. Please go ahead. Okay, thanks, Arthur. All right, uh, so let me continue with the uh, SecOp part. And just to remind that uh, it includes uh, Flomo ADS, uh, which is our uh, network traffic analysis uh, product, and uh, Flomo DDoS Defender, which is uh, a module for volumetric DDoS attack protection. So let's start with the Flomo ADS. Give me a second. Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, what's planned. Uh, the next upcoming version is uh, Flomon ADS, which is planned for this summer. And uh, the major thing in this version is going from batch processing of flow data to stream processing flow of flow data. This uh, brings several benefits, uh, which I will talk uh, later. Before that, uh, I will mention just another version, which is planned for the autumn, uh, ADS 11.1. Uh, and in this version, uh, we are focusing on extending our threat intelligence capabilities and also improving uh, user situation awareness using MITRE, MITRE attack mapping. Uh, what we also want to focus continuously, not for just specific version, is the extending of uh, detection methods. Uh, so our effort will be to continuously bring new detections for current uh, emerging threats. So let's deep dive into uh, particular versions. Uh, as I mentioned, Flomon ADS 11 uh, brings uh, new stream architecture which is unfortunately invisible for users it is not seen it cannot be seen in the ui but it brings us several benefits and one of the benefits is near real-time uh, detection of events so instead of uh, five minute batch processing of flow data and uh, around five minute detections of event we are now in uh, near real time and it also allows us to scale up with the performance going uh, to up to uh, 100K per appliance. This version uh, will be available for our beta participants uh, by the end of the May and uh, in stable in one or two months after. What we also did change is how we process the events. So uh, it's also related with the stream architecture. And now the events uh, have a duration. So an event starts, uh, it has some duration and then it ends. Meaning that for one anomaly, which can last for 30 minutes, we have one event. So this is something different compared to previous version and the batch processing where we could have up to six uh, events for this one anomaly, which lasted 30 minutes. And in this version, it will be just one event. That means that the user is presented with a lower count of events and it will also help them to, uh, to investigate, uh, uh, to have a better overview of, uh, of what's going on and what's detected. Another thing we uh, focus in this version is improving uh, situation awareness of our users. And the first step uh, we took is to better explain what was detected. So in each uh, event detail, uh, the user is presented with more information about, uh, about the detected event, also with some explanation what was detected, as you can see on the second picture. Another thing, uh, what, what will change for this uh, version, and it was already mentioned, is uh, moving the reports and widgets to central reporting in dashboard and reports. So it will not av be available in the module itself, but it will move to the dashboard and reports. So you will have one place uh, for viewing your dashboards, configuring uh, reports, and scheduling them. So that was uh, version 11, and let's go to 11.1. Uh, as I mentioned, we want to focus here on extending our threat intelligence capabilities, 
uh, to be more flexible uh, and provide better flexibility, not for us, but also for our customers. And it also includes some integrations or uh, support for uh, ex uh, automated exchange format, uh, sorry, platforms uh, which exchange that intelligent information such as MISP or Stix Taxi. And uh, it will also uh, allow us to uh, better connect threat intelligence feeds to the to the from an ADS to have some dynamic blacklist uh, categories and also uh, detect uh, uh, events based on JA3 fingerprints, which corresponds with the encrypted, encrypted traffic analysis use case. So that's something which is transferred in uh, or is created from the TLS SSL header and can be used uh, uh, for detection of some malicious uh, communications. In this version, we also want to continue uh, with improving uh, of the situation awareness. And in this version, we will uh, do it uh, by starting to categorize detection methods using MITRE attack metrics, which is basically a knowledge base uh, which describes uh, attackers' tactics and techniques, which are in different categories. And uh, it describes uh, uh, it describes also the ways how to defend uh, from that. So it will help uh, users not only understand what's going on, but how to how to uh, remediate it. Okay, so that was for the Flowmon ADS, and let's now go to the DDoS Defender. Uh, we have uh, released uh, version 5.1 in the February uh, in, uh, for which was available for our beta participants and it will be uh, available for all uh, within the month as a stable and this version brings overlapping networks in segment definition. Uh, I will talk more about it later and this version will be followed uh, with uh, DDoS Defender 5.2. This will be also available uh, for our beta participants with the release of from 11 so in two or one or two weeks so the first version uh, brings the overlapping network uh, in segment definition and it actually allows us to create segments which overlap in the ip ranges so i can have one large segment uh, for my isp infrastructure and then i can have uh, uh, smaller segments which correspond to my customers or I have I can have one uh, segment for our customer and uh, another segment which uh, belongs to the customer's IP range but uh, I want to uh, detect uh, or define it using just one particular IP address for example so this is something which is uh, available with this version and this uh, version of Defender 5.1 is uh, the last version compatible with the Flowmon 10. Going to the 5.2, uh, this version brings uh, the whitelisting of IP ranges or, and uh, ASNs. And as you can see on the pictures, there are options how to create uh, rules for whitelisting white IP ranges and ASNs. And this will help you, help you to exclude false positives. Uh, for example, when there is some uh, sports sports event coming up uh, for example some football events every wednesday uh, and you uh, detect it uh, as an attack you can whitelist it using for example uh, for, uh, using ASNs so you are not uh, bothered with such events these are still detected as events they are still present in the attack list but they are uh, uh, labeled as whitelisted so you will still get the information that something was happening but uh, you um, might not be alerted based on that and mitigation will not start based on this this event another thing which uh, is uh, brought by this version is better uh, or gr more, more granular configuration of flow sources for so when you are creating or editing segment uh, you can uh, uh, you can specify uh, which flow sources you want to use 
and also uh, what interfaces from that flow source and directions of that interfaces you want to use for the flow processing for the attack detection. So this will uh, help uh, with uh, excluding some links you don't want to uh, use or process for the detection uh, and it will not mess with your base baselines uh, and may make the detection more precise. This, as, men as mentioned, uh, will be available in one or two months together with the release of from 1.11. Okay, and so that's was that that's everything from my side. So now there's time for questions, and I'm passing word to Arthur. Thank you, Martina, very much for uh, the explanation and 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 the overview. Uh, I think let's uh, let's do let's do this question first. Um, there were multiple questions on release times. Uh, can maybe Pavela you wrap up? Flowmon version 11, 11.11, 12, very quickly, and then Martin uh, will continue with ADS versions. Just to run through the dates again, if we can remind it, please. Okay, okay. So mid-April is the release date for version 11, Flowmon version 11.0, and Flowmon packet investigator version, it will be again 11 because we continue with traffic recorder, so it will be Flowmon Packet Investigator version 11.0, also mid-April. For 11.1, .1, for Flowmon 11.1, .1, we do not have, obviously, exact release date yet. My personal expectation is something like uh, August, September. And for Flowmon version 12, I cannot uh, say release date yet. Again, my expectation is like uh, maybe March uh, 2021 or something like that. But this is very preliminary. Thank you, Martine. ADS and DDoS. Uh, you're muted. Martine, you're muted. Yeah. Uh, fixed. Okay, so with the ADS 11, it's planned in uh, in beta by the end of the uh, end of the May, and uh, with uh, 11.1, .1, it's actually also not planned for specific date. Uh, presentation said autumn, and it was it is uh, it is um, planned or yeah, so it should be like in September or or following month, like something like that. Uh, but as I said, we don't have a precise date as of now. And the DDoS Defender 5.1 is already available as beta and will be stable within a month. And 5.2 uh, will be released together with the Flowmon 11, uh, so mid April. All right, thank you. Now, I this is more for maybe, maybe what is also worth it to mention is we kind of forget APM today, but it's not going to disappear. Flowmon APM for Flowmon 11 will be released as well. So it will be covered uh, as well. Excellent, thank you. This is more for Martin. Martina, how will the 11, uh, and this refers to uh, Flowmon ADS, how will 11 affect the licensing policy? Yeah, uh, that will change, but from the customer's point of view, uh, the good way. So there will be increase in the performance for current models. Uh, nobody has to pay anything. They will just get their performance increased to the yes. respective level of their um, uh, license. Yeah. Thank you. Can we use there only? Is, there is also, there is also a change in the features. So all the modules will have the same features, and uh, we will cancel the specific ADS ISP edition. There will be no need for any ISP edition. It will just be ADS and these two editions, like enterprise and ISP, will merge together into a single ADS. Just so to make simplification, it... simplification, simplification. Wonderful, thank you. Another question is, can we use own JA3 fingerprints? Martin, that's for you. 
Yeah, it will be able. It will be possible to to uh, import uh, it, it if it will be it, if it will be in a CSV like format. It will be possible to import it to the Flowmon uh, ADS and use your own JA3 fingerprints for the detection. Yeah, so it will be possible. Thank you. And one question I wasn't able to answer. I'm not sure if I um, uh, if I understand it well, but Martin or Pavla, you may uh, you maybe will. When can we see new detection signatures? Detection signatures. Um, maybe let's start with uh, explaining, yeah, explaining that we're not uh, working with signatures per se. Maybe this is uh, more about detection methods. Yeah. Um, let me sum it up. So there are detection methods in ADS that works on behavior principles. So they cannot be really considered as signatures. And these detection methods are being continuously developed, continuously extended. And with, uh, yeah, with for a couple of last months, we didn't really add new methods because we are moving to the new uh, flow mode ADS architecture. So all the methods have been implemented for the you know, stream processing, and now we will again add new and new detection methods. Then we have something called behavior patterns. It can be seen as a sort of signatures on flow level data, but we don't want to mess with packet level signatures, so it's, it's behavior patterns. And that's uh, something which is continuously developed by us and provided to Flowmon ADS in regular update feeds. And last thing that's important to mention is really intrusion detection signatures, which are for Suricata. And by default, there are community public available signatures that anybody can use free of charge. And also anybody has the option to purchase commercial signatures and use instead of community use commercials, but it's not about purchasing them from us. It's about purchasing them, for example, from through point emerging threats like these uh, professional signatures for Suricata. There are multiple options. And let's do one more question that has just um, uh, come up, which is, will there be um, an easy way to check J3 fingerprint with some external engine to find out if this is a known malicious site or app. This is not currently planned. So, actually, there are there are things that you can do. It's if you, for example, if you want to check a specific IP address in a specific database where you have access. So there is the option to configure external resource or external query uh, in ADS. So then you can take that IP and you can call from ADS user interface that external database and it will open you a new web browser window and it will query that specific database and give you the result. So something like that can be implemented for JA3 fingerprints as well, but it depends if we really have a reliable source of that information. I would personally not rely just on JA3 fingerprints. I will take them as an indicator because they are definitely not almighty measure how to detect malicious behavior. They just can be seen as one of the indicators of compromise thank you very much there was another question related a question related to configuration templates i asked for uh for an elaboration let's see what comes in a second um right so when so this is a question to configuration templates and uh thus question for flowmon and for pavel uh, when we update, uh, upload uh, a new template, what is actually changing um, and what values are changing? I, I hope I'm translating this well. Does it make sense, Pavel? Yeah, technically what may change is, for example, there is a template for Salesforce. So there, may be, there might be an update how you will 
identify Salesforce traffic in the network. So that can be one of the options. Just today, we have been discussing if we should add one new service into video streaming configuration templates. And yesterday, we actually published a new configuration template for uh, monitoring of quality of service. So again, usually these templates don't need to change very often, but they may change in a way how we uh, filter out the specific traffic that is needed to visualize the metrics for that application or for that protocol or whatever is the, the scope of the template. Thank you. Uh, I have forwarded you the, the, the question, Pavla, to your chat. If you feel like uh, you should uh, come back to it, uh, I'm, I'm sure we will get in touch with Pavel. Thank you, Pavel, for the question. Uh, not you, Pavel, but the um, uh, the, the uh, attendee, Pavel. Uh, also, I've tried to answer all of your questions that were not answered by our experts. Uh, if you want to know more, uh, please do get in touch with us after the session. Uh, as I mentioned, we have recorded this session and we will send it to you um, uh, in a few days after we finish off uh, some uh, editing. Um, and this is all from us today. So, Martina, thank you very much. Thank you. Pablo, likewise. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Hope to see you again next week on Wednesday when we have a webinar planned for encrypted traffic analysis and hunting threats in encrypted traffic analysis with our senior pre-sales pre engineer, David Townsend. Uh, the registration is open now. Uh, hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Uh, enjoy your home offices. Uh, stay healthy and safe. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.